Okay, let us see how we handle this proof. Now, connect to the particles. Particles of mass m1 and m2, where m1 is better than m2, are connected by a tau. Tau means light and inextensible. It cannot be pulled. And when it's pulled, it cannot be stretched over a smooth pulley. If the particles hang freely and are released from rest, show that attraction is given by that, then tension is given by that. So all we do, we draw a simple sketch. This is my where the pool is going to be. Then, don't put in out of design. These are the things. Now one is going to be on this side. Then another. These are strings. Which are okay. One is going to be on that side. And I didn't ask that M1, of course, M1 is on this having a greater. So, it means that if this one is my M2, M2, then this one is going to be pulling. So it's pulling M1, it's pulling. Okay, so find the relation with the spin. Okay, because this one, we are going to have our weight, which is going to be M2D. Then this one is also having a weight, M1D. Then the tension in the string is going to be there T. Then also the, because it's the, it's the same string passing over, so the tension is going to be the same. So that is the idea. Now, because this one is having a greater mass, of course the acceleration is going to be in that direction. Because this one is heavier than this, so it's going to pull it in that order. So now if this one is pulled, then this one is going to be moving upwards like this. So it's going to accelerate, but in this direction, like this. Okay, so after doing that, I think the number is done. Okay, let us start with uh, the M2, let us start with this one, M2 mass. M2 mass. So what do we have? Is that now, this one, the acceleration, the direction of the acceleration is very crucial. It's going in that way. Meaning that now our resultant FR should also be in that direction. MA. So meaning I out and now it's going to also be in this direction. This thing on the first I think you see. So we're going to be having now T minus the opposer M2D equal to the mass, which is M2, then times that direction which is A. And we've got this one, equation mode. If we come now to M2 mass, sorry, M1. M1 mass, you see the direction of the acceleration is in that order. I think you see. So, meaning our resultant force is going to be in the same direction as the acceleration of the particle. So, meaning we're going to be having M1B, now it's pulling, but it's being opposed by T, equal to M, the mass which is M1, then times A, and we call this equation 2. Now, what is the acceleration? Is equal to this total with the acceleration. So see, how do I get this acceleration? To get this acceleration means that I need to eliminate this one, this T. So you see, negative, positive. So I'm going to just add this to the equation. So what am I going to say? I'm going to say equation 1 plus equation 2 because they have different signs. If I want to get A, I eliminate T. Because they have different signs, we add. So 1 is going to be t equal to, sorry, t minus m2d equal to m2a. Then this one, if we rearrange, this one is here, it shall be added negative t, then plus m1d equal to m1a. And so if we add those two things, this plus this shall get zero, then this plus this we shall get we shall get negative m2 g okay plus m1 g equaling we add this one we get m1 m2 a plus m1 a now from there what do you think is common? It's like from here and this common. We factorize out that D. From here, we factorize out that D. Our D 
we shall get now m1 minus m2 equal in 2 that is going to be as common into m2 plus m1 so if we make a sum of it our solution is going to be divided by this to get d into m1 minus m2 the whole over the whole over m1 okay m1 or m2 plus m1 and that will be our acceleration sorry we have to change this this is going to be m1 because this, this one is greater this is just an error of course you can get a negative so the greater minus and it is smaller okay meters per of course if you want you can put meters per second squared okay so what else now we are going to see we want to get the tension how do you get the tension in that if we want to get the tension <coughs> we can either use any equation we want we can either get this and the substitute in this or we can ever also eliminate how do you eliminate it means that now we are going in this equation one so, we are going to see that this one is having M1, this one is having M2. So, we are going to say M1 in equation 1, because they are having the same signs, we subtract M2 in equation 2. So, can we have them? So, we have T minus M2D equal to M2A. Then, this one is the real range, M2D plus m1d equaling to m1a so here we are multiplying through by here getting m1 in equation 1 then m2 this m2 so if you multiply this times this you get m1 t then minus m1 m2d equaling to m1 m2 a then this time you should get negative m2 t m1 m2 d equal to m1 m2 a then what i have to do we are going to subtract of course because we have to remain the other so if you subtract this minus minus we shall get now m1 t Plus M to T. I started to use a factorized out T, but go slow. This minus minus we have minus M one M to B minus M one M to B equal to zero. So sir, T is common. Shall get M one plus M two equal to this will be two. They are twice. We take them that side to M1, M2D. So from here, our T is going to be, if we divide, 2 M1, M2D over M1 plus M2. And these are in Newtons if you want. You can put there the Newtons. And I think you see the proof is just like that. There's nothing with M2, but this is just a product. It's the same. And anyway, so that's it, members. That's how we handle that proof. I wish you well. You can even underline that the work is very nice. Ah, so that's how we handle that. Yeah, maybe just practice this. This is M1 minus M2. Of course, if this force is greater than this, this one minus this, so that you don't get negative. I wish you well.